Who was Dr. Kenneth David Kaunda? Born on April 28, 1924 in Chinsali to parents that were both educators, he was the youngest of eight. His father was an ordained reverend and teacher, while his mother was the first African woman to teach in Zambia. Excelling in academics during his earlier years allowed him to be selected to attend one of the first secondary schools in Zambia. After finishing school, he followed the footsteps of his parents and became a teacher. He first taught in Zambia and then later on in Tanganyika, which is present-day Tanzania. Upon returning to Zambia in 1949, he took on the job of advising and interpreting for a white settler who was a member of the Northern Rhodesia Legislative Council. Driven by the longing to see Zambia liberated from white colonialism, he used this position to learn more about the liberation struggle that lay ahead of him. This pushed him to the forefront of the fight for independence. Equipped with the knowledge of the inner working of the colonial government, he entered politics as a founding member of the Northern Rhodesian African National Congress in 1949. As years went on due to infighting, he broke away and formed Zambia African National Congress in 1959, which took a more radical approach against the colonialists as he believed the Northern Rhodesia African National Congress did not take a hard enough stance against the colonial rulers. However, that same year the party was banned and Kaunda alongside Harin Kumbula were arrested for nine months. Rather than being a deterrent, this only proved to fuel Kaunda's radicalism and lifted him to the status of a national hero in the eyes of Zambians. UNIP was then created by Mainza Tona while he was still in prison, but after his release, Kaunda took over the leadership. In 1960, he had a memorable meeting with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. as the great leaders came together to fan the embers of liberation. As hard as he fought for Zambians, he also banded with African leaders for majority rule. He hosted the headquarters for the ANC as well as the SWAPO. In 1961, the Chachacha Uprising was held. This was a revolt which saw mass insurrection mainly in the north where symbols of government were met with aggression. It was in this same year that the British colonial government agreed to the rolling out of a plan for decolonization. Kaunda won the independence election in 1964 with Ruben Kanga as his vice president. But the heavy sanction imposed by the British government after independence made it hard for the new Zambian economy to flourish. Perhaps coming from a family of educators, he believed that education was the key to Zambia's flourishing future. And so in 1966, he commissioned the University of Zambia and encouraged Zambians from all walks of life to contribute what they could towards its construction. Pan-Africanist, Kaunda was known for harboring political exiles and even clashed with then-British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher over sanctions against the apartheid regime. So set on his beliefs, he stopped smoking, drinking alcohol, tea, and coffee in protest of British colonialism, having his last cup of tea in 1954. He also became a vegetarian in 1959 as an objection to butchers who practiced segregation against Zambians during the colonial era. When he retired from politics, he became a humanitarian and a strong voice against the HIV pandemic that was ravaging the country and even won humanitarian awards such as the Grand Order of the Eagle. Not one to be lost in a crowd with his trademark white handkerchief and kaunda suit, he was a keen ballroom dancer and those close to him said among his favorite shows to watch were Strictly Come Dancing and Dancing with the Stars. He was a troubadour who composed freedom songs that brought the country together in times that glorified division. With Zambians and Africans as a whole on his heart, he published books that pushed his ideology of African socialism. 
So who was Dr. Kenneth David Kaunda? A comrade in the fight for freedom, a keen ballroom dancer, an inspired musician, a fierce leader who fought the very long-reaching arm of oppression, perhaps a humanitarian for the fight against HIV. Regardless of the many hats he wore, or should we say the handkerchiefs he waved, one thing is for sure. In this year of 2021, Africa lost a son, and Zambia lost a father.